Hello everybody, I'm Bolt Matrix, and today we are taking a look at Transformers Studio Series number 72, Starscream, from the Bumblebee movie. I, we're going to start this figure off in vehicle mode, simply because I think that is more interesting. The robot mode we'll get into in just a moment. The vehicle mode is not how the figure is packaged, it is in fact packaged in robot mode. As you can see, we have the weird tetrajet form that, let's just call it divisive. Yes, we'll call it divisive and leave it at that. Now, the one thing I do have to admit is there's a lot of really cool detail going on here. That nose cone, however, I don't like it. I want it to be full, filled in. But there's a lot of other nice detailing going on with the mold and the actual figure itself. The protrusion coming off the bottom is a little bit weird. I mean, it's the arms folded up practically. And the fact that the figure has the robot mode's head sticking out the back there is annoying but overall it's not bad it it's really not bad it looks alien it obviously is a plane but not of this earth and that's pretty cool i'm not sure how well this shows up on camera but there is a molded cockpit in there and what looks to be a seat that is right there, but there's a peg in there that actually holds the canopy on, but you can reach your fingernail in here and kind of lift up the canopy to see that, yeah, there's a whole cockpit molded in there, which is just weird. Another weird oddity is the fact that the entire thing is held up by its weapon. If you unpeg the weapon, it can stand, but it doesn't stand as well. Now, this gun is one of the three accessories that the figure comes with. This is the accessory that comes with Blitzwing. They are not the same. They are molded very similarly, almost identical in look, just not in size. The gun does connect to the vehicle mode via these three tabs, like that, and then we have this thing, which on the side, or from an angle, it looks pretty good, but as soon as you look at it straight on, you realize how thin it is. And no, I haven't been able to figure out a better way to attach the rear tail wing so that it doesn't flop around. The wings do have these other accessories that are the guns, and they are very, very loosely on there. As soon as I start touching or moving the figure, the guns have a tendency, the black guns that is on the side, have a tendency to fall off. Now they do have variable wing configurations. You can slide the wings back like that, and you can have it have an attack mode like a TIE fighter or an X-wing or something from Star Wars. It could come in and fly in like that. And that actually would work, I think, better for a more heavier oxygen atmosphere to provide more lift as opposed to the light oxygen and nitrogen atmosphere of Cybertron. And also, this just looks more scary. Now the discourse online has been that, oh, Starscream here is just a remold of not Starscream, aka Blitzwing, from the Transformers Bumblebee movie. And I would agree, sort of. Sort of. Because these figures are very different. Especially the under kibble. There's obviously a whole heck of a robot folded up here. I mean, th this whole bottom section is the chest and torso and arms, and the legs and back torso is all of this, and then the backpack is literally this whole section right here. So it's very different, very different transformations and very different feel for both figures. All right, let's go ahead and get into the transformation.
And here we go. Here is the robot mode. And I gotta admit, it looks awesome. It looks alien. It looks Seeker-esque. It looks pretty much how exactly I wanted it to look, except for the back. I kind of screwed that up. These should be folded up more. Yeah, who cares? It's a great figure. It really holds together well. All the joints are super tight and it looks really good, really alien. I'm really happy with it. And it, it's, it's just cool. It is just cool. And they managed to get the Starscream colors perfectly. And I really do mean that. The red is the exact red I think it should be. The gray or off creamish white is, it could be a little bit darker, but it actually works incredibly well here on this figure. And the blue is nice, bright, and vibrant. And through the transformation, the Decepticon symbols are pointing in the correct, or what I think are the correct directions in both modes. So yeah, it's a winner. What would I change? The only thing I would really change is one, give us the Decepticon symbol here and fill in the wings on the backs here and here and make it so that these guns, as soon as they are moved, don't have a tendency to fall out. The actual plastic is that weird nylon plastic that Hasbro has been using over the last year or two, and they they're really slick, so I had to rough up the actual pegs with a little bit of, sa uh, what do you call it? Sand. Sand paper. Yes, sand paper. Ugh, it's been a day. So, anyway, robot mode. It's tight. It's awesome. Let's look at it a little bit closer. Starting at the feet, you can see that the molding is excellent, and they really went all out with the paint on the plastic on this guy. It, it just... It works. It really does work. Now, I, that's not to say it can't be improved. I would love for my buddy Grimlockimus to get a hold of it and do something with it, which I'm sure he will, but it's really nice. Now, what's not really nice is the head sculpt. I am not the biggest fan of this head sculpt. It's not bad, mind you, but I think it could be better. The face is not my favorite, but I do appreciate the nice vibrant blue eyes, blue eyes, red eyes, and the black of the head works well. Posability for the figure is also pretty darn good. Head is on a ball joint. There's a swivel in the shoulder and a hinge for in and out movement. Bend at the elbow, swivel at the upper bicep. Unfortunately, the fists do not rotate. That's my biggest complaint about the robot mode is the fists don't rotate. There is a, tor okay, there is another complaint about the robot mode. I'll talk about it in a second. There is torso articulation, but it's very, very tight. Legs can kick forward about 90 degrees. Can't really kick back all that well due to the backpack, but can kick out at, well, 90 degrees. There is a thigh swivel and bend at the elbow. Bend at the elbow, cheese. Bend at the knee is a little over 90 degrees, and then some nice ankle articulation. Wow, that's very flexible. And foot articulation is on a swivel for, yikes, 180 degrees practically? Now the one thing that I absolutely dislike about this figure is this weird crotch plate. It's right here in the box. It comes, well, transformed such that it's pushing right up against the figure, and the figure can't, hips can't move until you push it all the way out, and then the hips can move. It doesn't need to be there. I don't know why it's there. I think it doesn't add anything to the figure, and I would prefer to take it off, or I would prefer it not be there, but if it's not there, then there's a hole in the vehicle mode. Now, compared to Blitzwing, Starscream looks pretty darn good. I like the coloring of Starscream more than I do Blitzwing, but Blitzwing is a fantastic figure on its own. And then we've got this Cybertronian version, which is Starscream, and it's a fantastic figure on its own. Man, we're just spoiled with Studio Series right now. These things are great. Before we do another size comparison, one word of not warning, but of note, there's nowhere on the shoulders or on the forearms to mount a gun. I would have loved to have seen the ability to mount these things, like right here or even up here on the shoulders. You can't. Ugh. Oh well. And just for comparison's sake, here's a menagerie of figures. We've got Kingdom Dinobot, Studio Series Jazz and Grimlock, and MP10 Prime for good measure. Man, these are really nice figures. The Voyager and the Leaders classes are just so nice. 
If you're a fan of the Bumblebee movie aesthetic, especially for what we've been getting in Studio Series, I highly recommend picking this figure up. This figure is currently available over at thecommandstore.com and should be available at the Chosen Prime, Big Bad Toy Store, Amazon, and any other e-tailer. And heck, it's even showing up in retail at this point. So folks, let me know what you think of this figure down in the comments. It is an excellent figure in my opinion and totally worth having in your collection. Thank you so much for watching. I have been Bolt Matrix, and I'll catch you all next time.